Hey, Kate. Hey, good morning, Gwen. Good morning. So here we are instigating women and friends again, trying to help everyone out there think a little bit differently about whatever their current environment is. Maybe it's stress. Um, maybe it's not, maybe they're looking forward to the end of one year and, and on to the next, but still we're getting a lot of, uh, information feedback about overwhelm and just so much going on. Yeah. It's Friday the 16th. And I literally was like, oh, I'm on a plane next Friday. <laughs> that, <laughs> that snuck up really fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought there was nothing. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, one week before we're in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things just, dates pop up. It's interesting mm -hmm. how we can just kind of be lulled along and then, holy crap, look at what date it actually is. Um, Or things just surprise us. Um, in fact, my 23-year-old son decided to bring home a puppy yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, hmm. Well, that's something that you might want to inform your parents about that you live mm. with. <laughs> well, he Merry Christmas, mom and dad. Thought that since we talked about it over Thanksgiving, and my husband and I both agreed, and not a good idea right now, that it would be a better idea for him to just do it himself and decide and and bring it home yesterday. So, mm -hmm. hmm. yeah, might be. Um passive aggressive <laughs> stuff to, to hey, unpack there <laughs> possibly and yet he is 23 um he is absolutely going to care for it himself um there's no ifs ands or buts this time there is no default to mama or dad uh no way so here we go but you already had a dog in the family too we right? do but it's our dog and he does plan to move out at some point <laughs> and I think really wants to know he's going to have a good friend there with him when he moves out maybe that's a trigger or prompt maybe it's a prompt if we think about our lesson from from last week it'll help him move out so I, I'm, I'm trying to be very optimistic here <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like the things that pop into my head are um, searching for an apartment with a dog, um, finding roommates who don't mind a dog, so many things. But on the other hand, if we're, if we're into looking on the bright side, at least it wasn't a cat. Oh gosh, no. Yeah. Half of us are <laughs> definitely allergic to cats. So <laughs> I knew that wouldn't happen. And, and that's part of it. Um, he is very allergic to a lot. And so this dog is hypoallergenic. Good. And so he named it peanut because he's highly allergic to peanuts. So this is the only peanut <laughs> that he won't be allergic to. Oh, yeah. That's sweet in a way. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's there, you know, lots of humor and sensitivity and bonding happening all over the house right now <laughs> but um I, I did Amazing. I did sit through a meditation uh this week which try to think have us um, think about reality our own reality mm -hmm. uh, a little differently um and and use the analogy I thought was pretty neat um you know think of your reality like some big party. Um, we all might be overwhelmed right now. We might have too much to do. We might have trouble prioritizing just as we would if we had been invited to, or we're having ourselves some big, huge party, um, and recognize that no matter how many people we want to see or conversations we want to have, or not people we might want to avoid or conversations we might want to avoid, um, all we can do is think about those things ahead of time. And then when we get to the big, huge party, acknowledge there's just too many people. It's way too crowded. Um, com some conversations are going to last longer than we would have thought. 
And there might be some fun surprises like a band or a song we want to dance to that kind of take us off our, our path. And, and we might leave the party um, not having talked to or being dragged into some conversations we'd hope to avoid. And yet still, we probably rate it as a good party most of the time. Um, and I thought, you know, that's probably a decent way to think through this is we may not accomplish in our day or week everything and stuff might come up, obviously. Um, but at the end of the day or the end of the week, it's not really about did we accomplish everything on our list. It's about how did we feel at the end and did we optimize it um, as best we could? Frankly, did we have some any fun? is, is what I took away. So I know you weren't quite into the whole party analogy. So what are your thoughts? Well, what I did like about, um, thank you for sending the meditation over. Um, what I liked about it was I had, um, I was actually laying on my, um, on Julia's bed, my Mm -hmm. daughter's bed. And, um, I was hot when I first got here because my husband was very kind. I'm in Oregon and he set the, the, um, heat on before, I got here. And so I walked in and it was a very lovely temperature until you got upstairs to when it was like a thousand degrees. And so I had opened, I had opened the, the, um, the window to kind of get some fresh air and, and cool it down a little bit. And so I was laying on her bed and of course, like the, the moment I lay down and I start this meditation about a minute into it, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm cold. And so I liked the meditation where it was like, just notice the feelings and sensation without trying to change it. Mm -hmm. Um, Just noticing that like normally I would have immediately like interrupted and closed the window and blah, blah, blah. So I just sat there and kind of noticed it, right. It wasn't harmful. Um, It wasn't, you know, going to cause me uh, (laughs) like frostbite or anything. Um, It was just slightly uncomfortable. And I had been, uncomfortable, which led me to changing the window in the first place. Right. So, um, and it needs to be said that I have a comfortable temperature gauge, like four degrees before I'm like too hot or too cold. So, um, it's totally a me thing, but like just sitting there with the, this analogy of, you know, it's a party where, um, or, or anything in life where instead of trying to control it so much, um, and to make it that, whatever the perfect idea in your mind is, um, perfect ideal might not be right. Right. It might, you might get there and be like, Oh, this isn't perfect. Um, so, um, I did, I did appreciate it for that. The noticing either the discomfort or the feelings or emotions that come up. Um, my analogy for life is a little bit different because, and it's been formed over the several, several, you know, several decades now, um, of life being kind of this puzzle to put together. And if you've ever put together either a poorly made or, or a not so poorly made puzzle, and you're trying to like the two pieces look like they should go together. And you're like, you're putting them in and they're like, nope, that's it. And and you're like, ah, oh, but none of the other pieces fit around it. And like, you're trying to shove it in there. And Um, and you know, just the, the aspect of plucking that piece out and being like, okay, maybe it doesn't go there. Maybe, maybe that thing that I'm trying to force is not the right thing. And then when you do get the right puzzle piece and it just clicks into place where it becomes easy. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of my analogy that I've been around for life, um, or I've been using for life in that space of like, when things get too hard when I'm trying to control too much, mm-hmm. when the energy involved is exhausting. I look at the puzzle and I'm like, well, maybe, I'm, maybe, maybe I've got a piece wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. And so in the party analogy, maybe I'm at the wrong party. <laughs> the right party. And I had just different expectations for it going in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, so I do like that idea of being uncomfortable, noticing the discomfort and where it's coming from, seeing if there's little tweaks that I can make that make it more comfortable if I'm truly comfortable, uncomfortable. 
um, and then seeing how it unfolds. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like saying hello, reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess this is what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah. Opening that door. Come on in. Everybody's yeah. welcome. Yeah. 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 There's a great Rumi poem that talks about welcoming your emotions. Um, and I'm not even gonna try to um I'm sure you've read it and like several of the things that we've done together, but um welcoming the emotions and just how each one of them is a gift and it tells us something tells us something about what our current experience is or what our past experience is and in listening to the lessons that each one of those emotions tell us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my biggest lesson the last year has been that our bodies are like radar <clears throat> and these yeah. feelings, true feelings that we have in our bodies are generally related to some sort of emotion and, you know, listen to the radar you think of it as a radio signal of some sort, you actually can turn it up or turn it down. You can lean into it. Um, um, most of us ignore it for a very long time and uh, that just doesn't work. And you, those things don't go away. Um, and your body will keep knocking. <laughs> it will keep talking to you. How are you with somatic experience? Like, do you feel things in your body? Mm -hmm. I do now. You do. I'm sure okay. I always have, but I just blocked it out and tried to ignore it for a long time. I'm still discovering things. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm discovering how, how to feel things in my body. Mm -hmm. I think for so many years, I just like stuffed it down. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. that I was, I was surprised to hear that there are some people who, who don't who feel it like throughout their bodies, mm -hmm. that that was even a thing because mm -hmm. I was all up here. Oh yeah. Still I've am. been up, up here in my loud mind forever. Um, but these exercises, whether it's journaling, whether it's meditation, whether it's just, you know, stepping back and using your five senses, um, have taught me that my, my, gut flutters a lot. Um, my heart will get warm or my hands will get super cold at, at certain times. And I don't think it's just hormones could be, but <laughs> I don't think so. I, I've just really started to factor all that in more intentionally. Yeah. I think, um, what I'm trying to key into, when I notice something in my body, paying attention to maybe where it's coming from, kind of examining different things. Um, and not getting too wrapped around what I think, you know, interpreting the meaning, like using this head to, to figure it out. As I said, life is a puzzle to me. So I do a lot of figuring out, but um, just simply noticing that there is a thing and then if it needs to tell me to change directions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a thing. It's not good. It's mm -hmm. not bad. It's just a thing. Mm -hmm. But there is intuition and radar that our bodies and our emotions can tell us. Yeah. So listening to those as well. Yeah. And it just makes a lot of sense to try to listen to many different views um, rather than always our head and our logic, yeah. because our thoughts can lead yeah. us astray. Our thoughts are generally based on our past experiences. And mm -hmm. I think that's what leads to blind spots is we can only know so much from our past and our own personal experiences. Well, I think I'd take it one step farther and say that, you know, the, our, our mind tries to protect us by writing what it assumes or thinks of as the future, right? So, well, you can't do that. You'll be a failure or you can't do that. That's not safe. Or, you know, you can't ask for what you want. They're just going to tell you no. And then you'll look like a fool. And like all these things that our mind is just like, no, 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 my past has taught me this. So therefore the future is going to be the same. Right. So great. Yeah. Great reminder. It's, it's just about protecting us. Mm-hmm.
but yeah. we always need that protection to move forward bravely into our future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes that protection can actually hold us stuck back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's generally. So how do we, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, for me, coaching has made a significant change in how I think about taking more control and writing the life that I want mm -hmm. versus the one that I thought I wanted. Mm -hmm. And not feeling guilty or silly about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, once you take the checklist away and, and either, you know, mark things off of it that, that weren't your ideas that were either society's ideas or, or were the shoulds that came at you from your family or just your assumptions. Once you start rewriting that list over the things that really are meaningful to you, how much more of a, um, fulfilling life mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. And for me, I was talking to a, a coaching client earlier today and I'm one of the things that occurred to me was I am a lot less angry than I was. Mm -hmm. My scorecard is a lot broader and has many more metrics than it used to. It's no longer about title or income or status or, I mean, it just really is about fulfillment and energy and passion for doing great work um, with people that I like to work with and uh, for people who really want to improve and transform themselves and um, a much better balance of work and home uh, and, and health, mental, physical, emotional, all of that stuff. So just so much richer. Yeah. Yeah. I was, um, since I'm in this house, I was reflecting back on like, and especially in this room, like one of the really big arguments that one of my stepdaughters and I had, um, and, and realizing that where it came from was just all that anger that I was holding inside and how, you know, it takes time. I think this is like the third year that I've been working on this, but it, it, the difference in my relationships relationships with her relationships with other people how different and better they are mm -hmm. since i'm not mad since i'm not trying to control everything since i'm not trying to make everything perfect according to me <laughs> <laughs> according to me yes. <laughs> yes isn't it amazing how we crown ourselves the ultimate judge <laughs> yeah how does yeah. that happen um I don't know. Like, how did my mind say that I was the arbiter of everything <laughs> of what value was? I don't know. Why was I right? I don't know. <laughs> but I guess, I guess it it did that because it, if if I wasn't right, then then something was horribly wrong. So I was right, clearly. <laughs> and who the heck was I? Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But by letting go of that, like, just how much what you said, balance, richness, relationships, openness, time to fit in a meditation, time to notice that, oh, my face is cold because I opened up the window because I was hot. <laughs> you're right though, spaciousness. Mm -hmm. If you're able to live in this way, at least a little bit of the time, it seems like you just find more space and more time and things just get easier. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it looks something like this glide path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You start putting your energy towards things that make you excited versus mm -hmm. the things that you have to do. Yep. Exactly. All right. I think that's so what I'm kind of taking into the new year is that gratefulness for the, for the journey that I've been on. Mm -hmm. Me too. And these simple little tricks, whether it's an analogy or whether it's a little habit builder um, to remind us that <clears throat> it's just one little step at a time. It must be. And we mm -hmm. must celebrate every little step we take, because if we try to take all this on, 
it's too big. It's too much. It, it just adds to the weight of the current reality. And then we do get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. One little step at a time to build towards the life that you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I am curious, how's the little meditation experiment going? So on Tuesday, um, the Monday I had, I, I, I did it. And then Tuesday I did it. And then I was reflecting with my husband and I was like, I think my prompt's wrong. Like, mm. cause my prompt that I was looking for was I would turn over and, and I would be in his crook and I would take a couple breaths. And, and he's like, cause I said, I didn't do it, you know, Saturday or Sunday. He said, well, I sneak out of bed on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, because he starts, we have this obsession with bread. So every week on Sunday, he starts the bread and then, and he doesn't want to wake me up because it's our sleep in day sleep in. We get to sleep in like six Oh five, um, <laughs> but maybe six 30 if we're lucky. Mm. Um, but, um, I just recognized that he's right. It's that the prompt isn't there all the time, mm-hmm. but what I do remember to do it at some point during the day, if it's at, if it's in the morning, um, when I roll over or if it's like, oh, I didn't do this this morning because, um, and so I, I've been meditating every single day, um, various lengths. Um, Mm -hmm. but for the most part, it's been, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes like the 10 minute one that you sent yesterday. Um, Sometimes it's because I wake up in the middle of the night. And um, so I, I have been doing it every day. I just, and, and again, it's not, it's not a bad thing to, to examine the prompt. Not at all. What about you and the walking? I've been walking, walking a lot. Going? I seem to have gotten more texts this week than ever in my entire life. <laughs> wow. I haven't counted my steps. But that'll be this next week. I'll actually start to count and track. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big nice. difference. <laughs> and fun. That's and awesome. Texts just pop yeah. up, you know, at unknown times. And here I go as best I can. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. It's funny um, that I don't mind yeah. being out of control in that sense. It's It's yeah. more a game. Which is part of what makes it fun, right? So if if the prompt's not right for me, or if it's not right for Liz, um, it's okay to say, oh, well, maybe maybe the breath thing, maybe the one breath thing isn't the right thing. Maybe laying down is too much. Maybe like examine your habits and see where where the prompt might come in, right? Yeah. It could be like brushing my teeth happens regardless. You know, so maybe it's I look at my toothbrush and I take a couple of breaths, or maybe it's you know, after, I don't know, I don't know, but it's okay to look at it and, and laugh and say, okay, well, what's my next iteration of this experiment? Mm -hmm. And and that really is the whole deal is take the power to create your Mm -hmm. own change by creating new habits. So Mm -hmm. good. We'll we'll keep looking at it and analyzing it and having a little fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, lots of good takeaways from today, whether we're looking at puzzles or thinking about parties or, or working on these habits. Um, good stuff yeah. here as we conclude 2022. Yes, absolutely. Here's to 2023. Here, 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Sounds good. Thanks for the time. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye.